On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand plans a visit to Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, to make an inspection of Austro-Hungarian troops. Ferdinand knows that he and his family are not liked by many of the Serbians. Past assassination attempts have been made on his family. He decides that day to wear seven lucky charms and a special jacket rumored to be bulletproof. The Archduke decides that he wants to convey a friendly message, so he opts for a topless car with 120 police officers along the route as opposed to the military. It just so happens that June 28th is his and his wife Sophie's anniversary. Sophie was born to a poor aristocratic Czech family, so she was denied royal status. This is the first time that the pregnant Sophie is to be paraded in public with the Archduke. Back in Serbia, Colonel Dragutin Dimitrovic, leader of the Black Hand Gang and leader of Serbian military intelligence, begins plotting the assassination of the Archduke. The Black Hand Gang was a secret gang containing members of the Serbian military and those who wished to unite the majority of the southern Slavic people near Serbia under the Kingdom of Serbia. The goal of the group was to create a greater Serbia by any means necessary. Gavrilo Princip was a local from Sarajevo. After attending schools in Sarajevo and Tuzla, he left for Belgrade, where he joined the Black Hand Gang. At this point in his life, the now 19-year-old young man is dying of tuberculosis. Angry at Ferdinand and the royal family for the economic troubles his family was facing, he has nothing to lose. Gavrilo Princip, Njelko Kabrinovic, and Trifko Grabez are the original three trained Bosnians. The three spent hours in the Belgrade Park practicing their marksmanship. The men come to realize that out of them all, Princip is the best shot. Therefore, he shall be the assassin. The three of them are sent to Sarajevo to assassinate the Archduke. 20-year-old Daniel Illich joins, supplying the weapons, and he is also responsible for recruiting the last three members, Vaso Kabrilovic and Shavat Kopapovic, both 17-year-old students, as well as Mohamed Mohamed Basik, a Bosnian Muslim and veteran conspirator. Illich also brings with him a secret suitcase that has been smuggled for over 200 miles across international borders. The suitcase contains four Serbian army pistols, as well as six bombs supplied by the Serbian army arsenals. The men decide that once their attempts have been made, they will swallow capsules of cyanide so that none will be questioned. Archduke Ferdinand and Sophie arrive at their destination and load into the car that is to take them to the town hall to meet with the mayor. As stated before, it will be a very open procession with little protection in hopes of portraying a positive and comforting image. The men get into positions. Mohammed is up first and is armed with a pistol. This is not his first attempt at an assassination. Years before, he was supposed to kill the governor. For whatever reason, he was unsuccessful. It just so happens that on the same day, the governor will also be in a car behind the Archduke. Mohamed Basak is very nervous. Next up is Kabrinovic. Kabrinovic is armed with grenades. He asks a policeman to point out the actual car in which the Archduke will be traveling. Princip strategically places himself in the middle, armed with a pistol to ensure that the job will be carried out. Further down, the two schoolboys place themselves on either side of the street, armed with grenades. Grabaz is even further down, also armed with a pistol. Despite providing the weapons, Illich decides that he is unwilling to kill and watches instead. The men anxiously await the arrival of the car. Mohamed Basak has the first opportunity. He, for some reason or another, is unable to and does not act. There are still six more assassins ready to ensure that the job is completed. Next is Kabrinovich. Kabrinovich has also contracted tuberculosis, so he too has nothing to lose. He throws his grenade without hesitation, but forget the 10 second delay. The Archduke car passes over, and instead, the car behind him is hit and injures a few. Kubrinovic wastes no time. He takes the cyanide and jumps into the river to ensure that he will not be captured. The remaining assassins are too stunned to act. To Njelko Kubrinovic's dismay, the cyanide he has taken seems to be ineffective, and the river is only 4 inches deep. He is captured immediately and sent away for interrogation. As he's being captured, he says, I am a Serb hero. The Archduke is able to get away unharmed and quickly heads to town hall to meet with the mayor. He expresses his anger to the mayor as the mayor attempts to share his speech that he has previously prepared. The Archduke responds, What is the good of your speeches? I come to Sarajevo on a visit and I get bombs thrown at me. It is outrageous. They take the meeting inside. The gang decides that there is nothing left for them to do at the moment amidst all the chaos. Unsure what to do next, they disperse. Meanwhile, Kabrinovich is being brutally interrogated for information on who he is affiliated with. Here, Kabrinovich says, no one but me in Sarajevo knew about this bomb, but Nijelko Kabrinovich does not break. Once the meeting at Town Hall is over, the Archduke and Sophie are joined by Count Herrick, who insists on joining the car for added protection. 
the Archduke decides that he wants to visit the members of his protection that were wounded by the grenade at the hospital. The car sets off. After separating with the group, Gavrilo Princip heads off to the corner of Franz Joseph Street to purchase a sandwich at Schiller's Delicatessen. While eating his lunch, he looks out at the road and is amazed at what he sees. Somewhere along their way to the hospital, the Archduke's car takes a wrong turn, placing them right at this very same corner. Gavrilo Princip wastes no time and quickly heads out to the car to complete the mission that just hours earlier appeared to be a lost cause. Initially, it doesn't appear as though anyone was actually harmed, until the Count realizes the Archduke has been shot. Sophie shouts, for heaven's sake, what happened to you, before she sinks down in the seat. The Archduke shouts, Sophie dear, Sophie dear, stay alive for our children. Within a short span of time, Sophie dies from a shot to the stomach, while the Archduke dies from a shot straight through the neck. Gavrilo Princip attempts to take a cyanide capsule, but quickly realizes that it too has gone bad. He has wrestled to the ground before he can shoot himself. Princip remains silent. Daniel Illich was quickly picked up by the authorities. He spills about the mission, including the information that the arms have been supplied by the Serbian government. The remaining conspirators are put on trial. Daniel Illich is the only one over the age of 20, so he is sentenced to hang. The schoolboys and Grabez are all under the age of 20, so they are sentenced to 20 years in prison. Kabrinovich faces the same sentence, but eventually dies of tuberculosis. Mohamed Basak was the only one to escape capture, and is later the mastermind behind another assassination. Finally, Princip, just days away from turning 20, is sentenced to the duration of 20 years in prison, but this sentence is over quickly when Princip dies in 1918 of tuberculosis. What does this mean for the rest of the world, you ask? The answer is total war. And so, World War I began. All of the countries involved rapidly declared war after war within a span of approximately 10 days. However, it wasn't until 1917 that the U.S. got involved, and we all know how the rest goes. Austria. Well, since the Archduke was assassinated, we can't be friends anymore. What do you mean, Austria? We're going to war. Yes, Germany. Well, since we're friends, Austria, and I don't like Syria either, we can't be friends with Russia or France. I want to declare war, too. What now, Britain? Well, Russia and France are our friends, so we have to go to war with Germany, because they're a bully. <laughs> Class, you need to settle down. What, Japan? We want to go to war with Germany now, too. We don't want to be left out. Germany will be friends with you. Woo! You're going down, Turkey. Yeah, yeah we'll take, take you down, down, too. Calm down. You know this isn't nice. You're supposed to be friends. And you're supposed to raise your hand when you speak. Uh, yes, thank you, United States. I'm going to kill you all. <laughs> How rude.